how to make drinkable water from urine if the world has ended, every well is poisoned, and dehydration is killing you faster than the radiation. The world ended, not with a bang, just silence. The kind that makes your ears ring. Cities are empty, stores looted, faucets dry, rivers radioactive, rain don't even think about it. You've got maybe 48 hours before dehydration shuts your kidneys down for good. No bottled water, no rescue, just you, the wasteland, and one very uncomfortable truth. You're full of water. It's just not drinkable. Yet. No worries, we're distilling urine into clean drinking water. Welcome to the gritty science of desperate survival. Why urine? Because you are completely out of options. Let's get one thing straight. Drinking urine raw is suicide. It's 95% water, sure, but that other 5%? Urea, salts, toxins, bacteria. Your kidneys worked overtime to filter that garbage out of your blood. Drinking it back is like asking your kidneys to run a marathon while on fire. They'll fail. You will die. Slowly. Painfully. With hallucinations. The Army Survival Manual lists urine right next to seawater and blood on the Do Not Drink list. That is not a suggestion, that's a warning written in corpses. Drinking raw urine concentrates the toxins with every single sip. Like drinking ocean water, your body uses more water trying to flush the salt than you actually absorbed. You're not hydrating. You're accelerating your own death. But here's the thing. Distillation doesn't care what the liquid is. Boil it. Capture the steam. Cool it down, boom, pure H2O. No salts, no urea, no bacteria, just water. The same process astronauts use on the ISS, except you're doing it with trash in a fire in the ruins of a gas station. The build, turning piss into water with no clean lab required. You need heat, you need a container, you need a way to capture steam. That's it, no fancy equipment, just scraps in survival instinct. Start with a metal pot or can, anything that can hold liquid and survive fire. Old soup can, perfect. A dented saucepan from a burned out kitchen, even better. Pour your urine in. Don't overthink it. You're not making tea, you're making water. Next, you need a lid or a cover. Not airtight, just something to trap the steam. A piece of scrap metal, a hubcap, a flat rock. Tilt it slightly so the condensation drips to one side. This is where the magic happens. Steam rises, it hits the cool surface, it condenses, it drips. That drip is your drinking water. The steam rises, hits the lid, condenses and drips down into your clean container. The urine stays in the pot. The water collects separately, Heat it. Fire, a camp stove, the heat from a car engine, a solar reflector, it doesn't matter. You need the urine to boil. Not simmer, boil. Steam is your friend. Steam doesn't carry salts, doesn't carry urea, doesn't carry bacteria. Just pure H2O molecules escaping the liquid, floating up. If you see steam, you're winning. Watch the drip, slow and steady. If it's dripping too fast, your lid is too hot. If nothing's dripping, your fire is too weak. Adjust. This isn't a microwave, it's survival chemistry. You are literally separating molecules by weight. Water evaporates at 100 degrees Celsius. Salts and urea don't. They stay behind in the pot as a gross concentrated sludge. Don't touch it, don't drink it. That's the poison you just removed. Finally, let it cool. Once you've collected enough, a cup, a bottle, whatever, let it cool down completely. Smell it. It should smell like absolutely nothing. If it smells like piss, you messed up. Probably splash some raw urine into the collection cup. You have to start over. If it smells clean, taste a single drop. It should taste like distilled water. Flat, boring, perfect. Let's continue with the science. Why this works and why you're not dead. Distillation is separation by boiling point. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Urea? decomposes at 133 but doesn't evaporate. Salts stay solid. Bacteria dead from the heat and they don't evaporate anyway. When you boil urine, only the water molecules have enough energy to escape into the air as steam. 
Everything else, the toxins, the waste, the nasty stuff, stays in the pot. When that steam hits a cool surface, it loses energy and condenses back into liquid. But it's not urine anymore. It's pure water. No salts, no urea, no bacteria. Just H2O. The same water that was in your urine minus everything that would kill you. This is the same principle behind desalination plants, moonshine stills, and the ISS water recycling system. Except you're doing it with a soup can and a fire in the apocalypse. If it works for astronauts, it works for you. NASA recycles 93% of astronaut urine into drinking water on the ISS. They've been doing it for years. The commander even joked, yesterday's coffee is today's coffee. Same science, different budget. Distillation is so effective, you could theoretically purify gasoline, antifreeze, or swamp water the same way. Not recommended. But in the wasteland, not recommended is just another Tuesday. The risks. What can go wrong? And how to not die. Don't drink the sludge. After distillation, the pot will have a concentrated, toxic mess at the bottom. That's everything bad from your urine, now ten times stronger. Dump it. Bury it. Don't touch it. Don't splash. If raw urine gets into your clean water container, you just poisoned yourself. Keep the collection cup elevated. Keep the lid angled. Keep your hands steady. Don't skip the boil. If the water isn't boiling, you're not distilling. You're just heating piss. Steam is the goal. No steam, no clean water. Don't reuse the pot without cleaning. That sludge will contaminate the next batch. Scrub it. Burn it clean. Or use a new container. Slow down the pace. Build tension with each word. One mistake, one drop of sludge, one splash, one half-boiled batch, and you're drinking concentrated poison. Your kidneys won't filter it twice. They'll just quit. In the wasteland, there's no second chance. No ER, no dialysis machine. Just you, your failing organs, and the irony of dying from the water you tried to make. Don't be that corpse. Shift tone again to one of empowerment and triumph. The payoff, you just made water from piss. You've got a cup of clean water, no bottles, no store, no rescue, just you, a fire, and the laws of thermodynamics. You turned waste into survival. You separated molecules with heat and gravity. You did what most people think is impossible. The world ended. The taps are dry. The rivers are poison but you're still alive because you know the science, because you know how to turn trash into tools, because you know that survival isn't about luck. It's about knowledge, scraps, and the willingness to do what's necessary. You just did what 99% of people would call impossible. You turned bodily waste into life. That's not desperation. That's alchemy. That's power. This isn't the last time you'll need this. Dehydration doesn't care if you're tired of the process. Master it now or die later wishing you had. No bottled water? No problem. Just science, fire, and desperation. If the water tastes clean, congrats, you survived. If it doesn't, well, at least you tried. Now go find more urine. You're going to need it.